Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through bronchiectasis. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash bronchiectasis or in the respiratory section of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. You can also find flashcards and questions to train your knowledge and help you remember the information longer at members.zerotofinals.com. So let's jump straight in. Bronchiectasis involves permanent dilation of the bronchi, which are the large airways that transport air to the lungs. Sputum collects and organisms grow in the wide tubes, which results in a chronic cough, continuous sputum production and recurrent infections. Bronchiectasis results from damage to the airways. Potential causes of this damage include idiopathic, meaning no apparent cause, pneumonia, whooping cough or pertussis, tuberculosis, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, connective tissue disorders, for example rheumatoid arthritis, cystic fibrosis and a condition called yellow nail syndrome. A Tom tip for you, yellow nail syndrome is characterised by yellow fingernails bronchiectasis, and lymphedema. Patients are stable and they have good clinical signs, which makes it a good choice for OSCEs. As yellow nail syndrome is rare, examiners will score high marks if you can combine these features and name the diagnosis. Let's go through the symptoms. The key presenting symptoms of bronchiectasis are shortness of breath, a chronic, productive cough producing lots of sputum, recurrent chest infections, and weight loss. Let's go through the signs. The signs of bronchiectasis on examination include a sputum pot by the bedside, oxygen therapy if needed, weight loss which will make the patient look cachexic, finger clubbing, Signs of core pulmonale, for example a raised JVP or jugular venous pressure and peripheral edema. Scattered crackles throughout the chest that change or clear when you ask the patient to cough. And scattered wheezes and squeaks heard throughout the chest. Next let's talk about the investigations. A sputum culture is used to identify colonising and infective organisms. The most common infective organisms to remember are Haemophilus influenza and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Chest x-ray findings include tram track opacities which are parallel markings which represent a side view of the dilated airway and ring shadows which are dilated airways that are seen end on as though you're looking end on at the tube. A high resolution CT or HRCT is the test of choice for establishing the diagnosis of bronchiectasis. Next let's talk about management. The general management of bronchiectasis involves Vaccines, for example the pneumococcal and influenza vaccine. Respiratory physiotherapy to help clear the sputum that collects. Pulmonary rehabilitation to strengthen the lungs and the muscles around the lungs. Long-term antibiotics, for example azithromycin, for frequent exacerbations, for example three or more exacerbations per year. Inhaled colistin, which is an antibiotic and used for Pseudomonas aeruginosa colonization. Long acting bronchodilators may be considered for breathlessness. Long term oxygen therapy in patients with reduced oxygen saturation. Surgical lung resection may be considered for specific areas of disease to take away the diseased lung and help the healthy lung to work better. And lung transplant is an option for end stage disease. Infective exacerbations require sputum culture before starting antibiotics, extended courses of antibiotics, usually 7 to 14 days, 
and ciprofloxacin is the usual choice for exacerbations caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa. A tom tip for you, the key features to remember for bronchiectasis are finger clubbing, the diagnosis by high resolution CT scan, Pseudomonas colonization, and extended courses of 7 to 14 days of antibiotics for exacerbations. Research has consistently shown that testing yourself after learning a topic has a powerful effect on how long you retain that information. This is known as the testing effect. Studying and then testing yourself results in longer lasting and stronger recall on that information when tested at a later date even when compared with additional study sessions. If you're preparing for a medical exam and you're not regularly testing your knowledge and practicing your recall, you're failing to maximise your potential. The Zero to Finals member site contains flashcards, short answer questions, multiple choice questions and extended matching questions that are purpose-built to supplement the Zero to Finals content, helping you build your internal database of knowledge and take advantage of the powerful testing effect. If you like the Zero to Finals notes, books, videos and podcasts, then you'll love the members' site. 